Hello friends and welcome to my channel. Today I would like to show a few more examples with asymptotes um, and I hope you guys will enjoy it. So let's start. Um, let's take a function f of x equals to... Well, last time I was um, having some easy computed asymptotes. Let's do maybe a, something different. Mm -hmm. What about this one? Of course, x is not allowed to be 2, and you see, well, on the long run, the numerator is going to be stronger than the denominator, but what is actually the asymptote? Well, obviously, um, it's going to be a linear function because the numerator is quadratic and the denominator is linear, so dividing a quadratic function by a linear function would give us a linear function as a result, or the function of the first degree. But can we be more precise in answering this question? And the answer is yes. We can do a polynomial division. I'll do it the way I know that. I like that. I know that some Chinese or American or British schools, they're teaching different kind of notation. I must uh, tell you this is just a notation nothing else all right so what do we have to multiply x with in order to get to x squared and the answer is just by x only so i'm gonna get x squared here minus 2x i'm subtracting x squared is gone 3x minus minus plus 2x is 5x plus 4 what do we have to multiply x with in order to get 5x we multiply it times 5 so this is just 5x minus 10 minus in between, we are going to get 4 plus 10, it's 14. So basically we have 14 divided over x minus 2. And as you can see, um, if x is increasing, then this fraction is going to 0, and our function is going to behave like x plus 5. On the long run to plus infinity, the fraction is decreasing and getting zero and on the long run to the minus infinity even though the x values are going to be huge but negative we are um, going to have in both cases a fraction which is pretty small uh, with just a different sign but still very small very close to zero so it's just x plus five okay um, should I give you one more example maybe where we have something like f of x let's say minus 3x squared plus 7x minus 4 divided over x squared plus 2x minus 3 well I could compute zero points of the denominator I'm just inventing this pr uh, problem right now and there are some maybe maybe there are there aren't any um, it's not that important if we're talking about um, behaving of the function on the long run. If we have, um, um, of course, if the function is turned apart, then we can call those kind of um, situations asymptotes as well. Um, do we have something like this here? Well, in order to know it precisely, let's see what's happening here. I'm putting it equal to zero. I'm having x12, it's minus 1 plus minus square root out of 1 plus 3, well, what a coincidence, minus 1 plus minus 2. So I got two zero points, one of them is minus 3, the other one is uh, 1. So basically our denominator uh, can be written as x minus 1 times x plus 3. That's the story we have. All right, what is happening in the numerator? So obviously, if I'm close to minus 1, if I'm close to 3, uh, to minus 3 and to 1, I'm, I'm in trouble because I'm dividing by 0. And as you know, mm, division by 0 causes some troubles. Mm. Do we have? Um, comparable number uh, zero points in numerator uh, well 
you know, let's put just one. I mean, I can't compute zero points in numerator the way I'm normally computing them, but if we are putting one, what will happen? Uh, <laughs> well, by the lucky coincidence, uh, this is a zero point as well. Really, I'm just inventing it. I have no preparation, whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, it's really funny. So it's minus 3 and minus 4 and then 7. Um, you see, uh, random numbers are not random in my head anymore. <laughs> well, at least I'm laughing now. <laughs> I don't know whether you can laugh with me, but at least try. Okay, so 1 minus 3 plus 7 minus 4. Crazy, crazy, crazy. It's, it's really a zero point, so this is actually... Um, a situation where we can cancel it. I will show it in a moment. And what about minus 3? Um, that's not that important anymore. But still, well, let me check. This is nine, minus 27. Mm, and, of course, minus 21. So, not interesting at all. Okay, so minus 3 is not a zero point. But now I have to... Re I was trying to compute it. Um, I thought would be uh, would be fine, but it didn't work out. So um, I'm just doing a polynomial division once again. Let's keep it simple. So minus three x squared plus seven x minus four. I think I'm willing to divide by x um, minus one since one was a zero point. So what are we getting? Minus three x gives us minus 3x squared plus 3x. We subtract. We are going to get 7x minus 3x. It's 4x minus 4. And we get plus 4. Okay, so it's 4x minus 4. No remainder, so everything is fine. Um, that means I can write my numerator minus 3x squared plus 7x minus 4 as x minus 1 times minus 3x plus 4. So let's get back to our question. We were having this numerator. minus 3x plus 4 and our denominator which was perfect written as x minus 1 times x plus 3. So now you see we can cancel those two assuming of course that x never is equal to 1 neither to minus 3. And now the situation is getting very simple because we are now at minus 3x plus 4 divided over x plus 3. So minus minus 3x plus 4 divided over x minus 3. Can we simplify it further? Can we do something else? Um, sure. I mean... We can just, uh, normally we're doing it this way. We're taking minus 3 out. And then we have um, x minus 4 thirds divided over x minus 3. I don't need this kind of parentheses, but it's still, okay, I wrote it here. I will need it later, so let's keep it this way. Now, Look, I have x minus 3 plus 3 here because I would like to get rid of a part of this fraction divided by x minus 3 still. And now we separate it right there. And you can see we're going to get 1. So it's minus 3 still. That would give me 1 plus 3 minus 4 thirds, I mean 9. Minus 4, it's 5, so it's 5 thirds. Uh, so basically 5, 5 thirds plus divided over x minus 3. And if we now solve the parentheses, 
we're going to get minus 3 and then minus 5, should be 3, sorry, divided over x minus 3. So you see this fraction is going to disappear again for increasing x and will be running towards minus 3. So minus 3 is the asymptote. Um, and what is happening next to um, 3, as you can see, well, the point is, if we consider this fraction, if we're slightly over 3, to so slightly bigger than 3, 3.1 or something, you see, if we put the numbers here, what are we going to get? So this number is very, well, let me write it this way. So I'm just only talking about minus 3x plus 4 now. We are talking about the limit x towards, um, what was it? Uh, x minus 3, minus 3x plus 4, minus 3x plus 4. In numerator, x minus 3 in denominator, and we are running towards 3 from the positive side. So we're slightly bigger. We're getting 3.1 or something. So the numerator is negative. The denominator is very small positive, so the result would be minus infinity. What will happen if x runs towards uh, 3 from the negative side? If we have minus 3x plus 4 divided x minus 3, well, now we have a negative number still here, and we have a negative number, very small number here as well, so the result would be plus infinity. So basically, um, x equals to 3 is our asymptote here. So the graph, that would be by 3. And on the one uh, hand, we are running towards minus 3, uh, considering plus or minus infinity, but if we're if we're approaching 3 from the right hand side, we're going to get to minus infinity, and from the left hand side, we're going to get to plus infinity, something like this. Okay, this is the way it works. And let me do one more example, which I really uh, look up in Demidovich book as well, all of the most of the cases I'm doing here, not all of them, of course. What about ln of 1 plus x? Well, if x is running towards infinity, um, this is infinity, right? So limit will increase and blah, blah, blah. But we are not allowed to run towards minus infinity, obviously, because of the domain of logarithms. Uh, so what is the value we can approach? And what we can do is we can run towards minus infinity, but only from the positive side. So we can be a bit bigger than minus 1, so like minus 0 0.996, for example, or something. And, well, what will happen there? You see it's this value is approaching 0, so it's minus infinity. Okay, because logarithm towards normal logarithm towards zero is approaching minus infinity. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. I think these are most questions that I wanted to explain about asymptotes. If you have something more to add, write in the comments. Maybe it will happen in a few years, but still, <laughs> I think I will be available for answering. All the best. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.